to the Kent Lap Podcast. What are some of the biggest challenges that a touring musician faces? I mean, I have to think family is one of them. Oh, if you have a family, it's it's just, you know, one of the worst things that you could do. I mean, it's really difficult, especially when you're get back to the vehicle situation. Mm-hmm. You know, prior to having multiple buses. Yeah. If you have a family, it's it's a real challenge. Yeah. You know, um, some acts, you know, each person in the group has their own bus. And so if they have a family, they can bring their own family on the bus. Okay. So. Yeah. But that's not, that's not very many people are like that, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I would say, um, I think about like job hazards, you know, kind of like, you know, other jobs that you might have, have particular hazards right. to your health you yep, know absolutely so if i can use that as the yep. kind of the example of of that i would say a job hazard in in music is one of them is fame obviously um it's obviously what kind of everybody is sort of going for at least all the accoutrements that go with fame but fame is a particularly nasty thing that once you have it you realize it has a hold of you and it's not it's it, it just the objectification of a person. It's dehumanizing. Hmm. And so that's a really difficult thing for people to deal with. In uh, person, on social media, just all, 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 of, it. all of it. All Wherever of it. we go, someone knows who I am and someone wants a picture and mm-hmm. just, okay. Yeah, just <clears throat> an objectification of that person. So hmm. you're a brand, you're a song, you're a, mm-hmm. you know, a performer. And so... You know, and and sometimes you know it's hard for the artists as 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 much as it is the fan or the people who are expecting the artist to be that way. Sometimes the pressures internally they're expecting themselves to be a certain way. Mm. So it's not just one way or the other. Mm-hmm. But fame, I think another one is um, the that's particularly pernicious is like the nature of the work is. Um, how you're successful is so elusive, the terms of success. Um, it's, it's not like you, you get plans to build a bridge, you go build a bridge and there's the bridge and it's working and everybody's crossing it. I did my job. I'm a success. I took home a paycheck. So you're always sort of chasing something, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and for most artists, you know, they can't, they, they, their album cycle may be two years. An album gets written and is out for two years, then they're back in doing another one. And so, you know, if they're in a record deal, multi-record deal with a record label here in town, there's a lot of, you know, uh, pressure about getting that thing again, capturing the essence yeah. again. And that's a real ethereal, abstract thing. Oh, I can imagine. Like yeah. if they have a really good record, trying to follow that. Yeah, follow it up and then, you know, just... What is what? What are the terms of success? Is it album yeah. sales? Is mm. it ticket sales? Is it number ones, top tens? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it social media? Is it streams? What is the ter- you know what I'm saying? Right, that's all kind of yeah. moving, evolving targets. Yes, always. certainly. Yeah, I think comparison um, is another one that we that I'm constantly kind of talking with. Is artists inevitably, no matter how much they are on the front end or how deep they are into their career with any amount of fame that you could imagine, they still struggle with comparing themselves to their peers, to the market, to the expectation. Really? Even if they're famous? Even if they're famous. Do you think especially if they're famous? <laughs> it might be at times, yeah. Okay. I think particularly, that's one of those fame you know, side effects is that you're constantly in that posture. Yeah, because I, I haven't been around enough famous people to to tell but the mm-hmm. uh, the rare times that I have I I pick up on at least obviously I'm not going to say any names but I, but um there's almost like an an amplified attention on what others are doing where the market's at what I'm doing how that's that strategy it's just so intense and always on yeah it seems exhausting yeah I think it's if you're the CEO of a large company and you had 500 employees, um, you would kind of live in this space where you kind of know, like these people are all kind of paying attention, looking out their, their window, as it were, taking care of the job to keep this thing going. And as an artist, you're the, 
you're the CEO, you're the product, you're the brand, right. you're the marketing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so that's part of the effect of that. And so you, you do have a, a chair that's kind of pulled up to the window all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you, you're very aware of critics, you know, mm-hmm. you're very aware of, of, um, of who's done what, and you're, you're kind of prone to be like, well, how in the world is that artist getting this success? And I can't, Right, I can't get out of the top twenty, and they're in the top five consistently. You know? Yeah, so there's that 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 kind of stuff is just bad for our soul. Right, no matter who you are or what you do, yeah, all the things we're talking about just creates a space that's very inhumane, and it it really is dehumanizing. Mm-hmm. It diminishes who we are and how God has made us to function best. Mm-hmm.